Well, why don't we get started with our next uh, lineup of speakers. Um, I have the privilege today of introducing the uh, 2013 graduating class from the KD Hospital Family Medicine Residency. Um, just uh, for grins here, could, could um, former alumni of the Family Medicine Residency stand up for a sec just to see how many are present? Great. We, uh, we uh, over the last couple of years, actually um, entered into uh, generations of physicians being trained, uh, sons and daughters of past residents. Um, it's been 41 years since Dr. Schnell and others started the Family Medicine Residency at McKady Hospital uh, with its uh, tradition of training full-service family medicine residents to go out into the world and, and uh, practice their skills. It's been a, um, hopefully a benefit to the Intermountain West as well as Utah in general. So I'm not going to introduce uh, them individually, but as a whole, um, our graduating class has uh, worked hard and is anxious to prepare their, uh, to present their, uh, their topics for you today. You'll find it a very eclectic mix. They will each come up individually, introduce themselves, tell a little about where they're from and where they're going, and then uh, we'll go on to the next uh, speaker. Um, their talks will last uh, approximately about 15 minutes, and then after all six are finished, um, they'll come up here as a panel and be open for questions for anybody stepping up to the mic. So with that said, I'd like to introduce our first speaker um, for the class of 2013. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Crit Ardema. I'm actually uh, fairly homegrown, born and raised here in Utah, in Ogden. Went to med school at the U, residency at Ogden, and uh, we'll be joining Tanner Clinic in Roy. So it's been nice to stay close to home, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I speak for the group collectively that we all are very nervous, and so if you hear the tremulousness amplified in the microphone, please forgive us. So today I get to, ex get to talk a little bit about an exciting experience, an experiment for that matter, that we're doing at Porter Clinic. I'm going to talk about telehealth, and it is an option to improving patient access to care, and quite frankly, patient costs of care. So to begin, no disclosures. So the outline, initially I want to talk a little bit about kind of the changing face of medicine. The push to go towards the patient-centered medical home, and different options that are now being introduced into the world of healthcare. Whether we like it or not, these changes are coming. And I'll talk a little bit about e-visits in general, most specifically for this talk, telehealth and what that entails. Then we'll talk a little bit about the research behind e-visits, the cost effectiveness and the outcomes. And ultimately, and the important part of this talk, highlighting the pilot program that we at Porter Clinic, by way of our residency, are introducing for telehealth and continuity care. So to begin, I'd like to just share this quote that was taken out of a talk, or I should say a paper written in JAMA. And you can see there it says, ample evidence now exists that countries that lead in primary care by providing accessible care that is person-centered, comprehensive, and coordinated achieve better health outcomes in their citizens and at a lower cost. So the patient-centered medical home, if any of you have done any, any research into this, this is a very large, very comprehensive topic that will take way longer than 15 minutes to address today. But I want to focus on a couple of aspects of the patient-centered medical home. Now, introducing the patient medical home, it's recognized as a promising alternative to the nation's costly fragmented delivery system. And it really focuses, or at least the part that I'm going to talk about, focuses on access to patient care and effective cost. So the NCQA, which is the National Center for Quality Assurance, is kind of the front runner for verifying, certifying different providers, different clinics, different health organizations as patient-centered medical homes. So they talk about different standards. There's a certain requirement standards that these organizations need to meet to be able to qualify as patient-centered medical homes. And 
This particular standard focuses on accommodating patients' needs and access during and after hours. So this next slide, as you can see, is quite uh, busy, but what I want to focus on is that first standard, improving patient access, and specifically in this case, electronic access. So electronic access can fit under this general category of what are referred to as e-visits. And e-visits, the American Academy of Family Physician, Physicians defines as a web-based or similar electronic-based communication network in which a provider can inter interact with a patient via electronic means. So e-visits as a whole fall under this category with it may be internet, or excuse me, email access. Intermountain, for example, has introduced My Health in which we can communicate with our patients by way of email directly. There is obviously telephone messaging and telehealth, which is a virtual office visit. As I was presenting this to my wife last night, I got about halfway through my discussion and she finally said, so this is kind of like FaceTime. Exactly, it's kind of like FaceTime, but with a little more sophisticated uh, electronic resources. So the, the couple of things I want to really focus on are patient access, cost, and how the e-visits and telehealth in particular can help accomplish those two goals. So patient access is improved with e-visits by way of providing an alternative to perhaps emergency room visits or Instacare visits or urgent care visits otherwise. This has been instituted already in rural areas and those places that are remote and make it difficult for the patient to get in to see a provider face to face. And ultimately, it could, in theory, expand quote unquote clinic hours. Not necessarily even meaning that the, that the physician or the healthcare provider has to be in clinic, but has access to their patients at all hours of the day. For better or for worse, I guess. So, cost savings. I want to prevent, pr present two different studies or, or reports in which I talked a little bit about the cost effectiveness. First of all was a study that was done with almost 8,000 patients in a retrospective manner that looked at in-office UTI visits versus e-visits. And as you can see by this slide, that the e-visit was a substantial amount cheaper than was the in-office visit. And Intermountain presented some data at the advanced training program about some projections in healthcare costs if the e-visits are better utilized. Now this is assuming a 2% increase in utilization and taking those visits perhaps away from the Instacares, perhaps away from the emergency rooms. And they project anywhere from $400,000 to $1.4 million in cost savings. So I understand, and obviously in general we understand that this is a change from the norm, what we've all been trained and expected to do in our practices. But the efficacy of the e-visits, I just briefly want to highlight two different studies that were presented, one focusing on, once again, the UTIs versus sinusitis, and another that looked at acne treatment, e-visits versus in-office visits. For the acne treatment, about 151 patients were randomized, half and half, and data that they looked at follow-up was that there was a similar decrease in inflammatory lesions, comparable uh, satisfaction from both the patient and the physician. It was time-saving to the patient, and as you can see here, it was about time-neutral to the physician. And as far as the UTIs and the sinusitis were concerned, they used a surrogate follow-up to see if they were properly diagnosed and treated by way of no difference in follow-up, decreased cost with the e-visit, and patient satisfaction appeared similar. <clears throat> so. Intermountain has been aware of, obviously, telehealth, e-visits, and have been trying to make steps forward to incorporating this in their patient treatment. So currently, Intermountain has four different physicians that support the telehealth or the virtual office visits. Those are four different physicians, all of which are Instacare providers and are based out of Utah County, Tooele, Sunset. They rotate clinics, yet they have access to providing patient care via telehealth. They've also proposed these employee health booths at certain centers designated by Intermountain 
that their employees can actually go into this room that's uh, equipped with Bluetooth stethoscope and other technologic means that the physician or the healthcare provider can actually listen to their heart sounds, listen to their lungs, see their vital signs, and then make appropriate diagnosis and treatment from there. That, unfortunately, is not quite up and running, but is in the works. So to this, to this point, at this uh, advanced training program, Tammy Richards, who's the Director of Clinical Engagement, presented this data there that in the fall of 2012, they'd had 64 visits, about an average of one call per day. And you can kind of see the breakdown there of the office, or excuse me, of the build uh, encounter levels. And this is just a, a quick list of some of those diagnoses that were made by way of this telehealth or this virtual visit. I found it interesting as I was looking through there, I, uh, it's kind of hard to imagine how those two were done <laughs> via a web interface. So as, as I wanted to, to talk about it in, in the initiation of this, these, this is an option to promote or increase patient access to care. This is an opportunity to perhaps decrease costs that we are incurring in the healthcare system. Now, Dr. Ann Hutchinson, who is one of the core faculty up at McKady Family Medicine Residency, she thought, you know, residency is an environment in which we should all be learning. We should all be on the cutting edge of technology and be experimenting with these things that are coming about. So she approached Dr. Wesley Valdez, who is the director of Intermountain Telehealth, about initiating a pilot program at Porter Family Medicine and trying telehealth in continuity care. As you can see by those previous slides, it's all to this point been urgent care or insta-care or emergency type visit based. And she saw the possibilities that this could be done on a continuity care basis. So this is the program that we have been participating in. Now I'm going to kind of just take you through the nuts and the bolts of the visit. Once again, as I presented this to my wife, by the end, she said, well, I still don't really get it. So hopefully by the end of my discussion today, you guys get it. So initially, they will go to our website, the Porter Clinic website, and there will be a button that they can click that will take them to this screen that they log in or they virtually check into the clinic. Initially, they will be put in a virtual waiting room. They will see the front office staff and then they will actually fill out all of their paperwork and things like they would do on a normal visit. And then they sit in this virtual waiting room until the physician comes online. Now when I were to go online, I would click, I'd turn on my camera, I'd turn on my microphone, and then I would see my patient face to face. During this visit, we are actually in our clinic, uh, we are equipped with a microphone, and so we can actually speak back and forth. If they don't have the capabilities at home to use the microphone, there is an option to just type back and forth what the discussions may be. Now one thing I think is key that was ingrained in me as a, as a medical student and as a resident, one of the key skills that we have to learn as providers is being able to tell who is truly sick and who is not. And we usually make that diagnosis as soon as we walk in the door. And in this circumstance, hopefully that same diagnostic capability can be communicated or, or can be achieved by way of seeing our patient on a face-to-face -face basis. So we can do our physical exam within limitations, obviously, but at the end of the visit, we make the diagnosis, then our patient is routed to this screen. I was left quite puzzled, I guess, in this circumstance. <laughs> but before they end their visit, they will be given this survey that we'll talk about much more in just, in just a moment. So just like the end of a normal visit, we can make uh, prescriptions by way of web-based prescribing. We can send them back to our front office staff for follow-up visits. We can make referrals by sending a message to our front office staff. And so essentially an entire visit can be made via this telehealth web-based experience. So one thing we really thought about when targeting those patients that we would be treating are initially to start with those that we perhaps don't need a comprehensive physical exam, such as diabetes follow-up, where we're reviewing their sugars, changing, making changes to their lantus. Same with high blood pressure, to review their blood pressure medications, to, to talk about what they've been running. And even a follow-up post-op post visit from a LEAP or a colposcopy where simply we need to know about how they're doing. So this is, so 
how does this happen? How do we find time to do this? Well, what we're planning on doing at Porter Clinic is booking them in our schedule, setting apart a 15 or a 30 minute appointment, just like we would do for any other specific visit. They would check in, and then when it comes time for me to see that patient, I simply go into the clinic room, sit down, queue up my screen, and have that patient interaction. So this doesn't necessarily create any more burden on me as a physician or my workflow during, during that day. Okay, so the, the goals of our pilot are several. First and foremost is the viability of this. Is this something that patients like? Is this something that is effective? Is this something that the physicians, quite frankly, will learn and will use? We want to know, is the patient satisfied? We want to know what the wait times will be, or at least what the perceived wait times will be. And that will be done by way of this survey, that once we identify the patient, we will have follow-up via e-visit. We'll administer this at the end of the in-office visit, and then we'll repeat this again at the end of the e-visit, and then compare that data. You know, our thought is maybe the patients, although the wait time is similar, maybe the fact that they're sitting on their couch at home watching a television program, maybe they feel like their wait time is better than when they're sitting in our waiting room flipping through a magazine. So unfortunately, to this point, I don't have any data to share with you, and that's because of a lot of bureaucracy. We've had to go through the channels on legal. We've had to figure out payment and reimbursement. And so we are hoping that this program will be up and running shortly within the next month or two. But uh, we are excited about the prospects. We're excited about the possibilities. And quite frankly, we're excited about our opportunity as residents to be learning about the advances in technology and how we can someday incorporate these in our practice. But the messages I'd like to leave you all with is that really healthcare is changing. The way that we deliver healthcare is changing. The expectations of how we deliver healthcare are changing that e-visits as a whole, and perhaps more specifically in this circumstance, telehealth is an effective, efficient, cost-effective manner to deliver health care, and theoretically at, without the loss of efficacy or efficiency. And lastly, to introduce the pilot program that we at Porter Clinic and McKady Family Medicine Residency are introducing for telehealth. So I look forward to your questions at the end. Thank you.